What's up, Jonathan? What's happening, dude? What's cracking, man? Man, I wanted to discuss where you were just at well, before we talked. You told me you were at uh, the basketball coach coaching thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I coach, um, I coach fifth grade girls at uh, Francis Xavier Ward. It's uh, just uh, in Gold Coast. Dang, that's what's up. How, yeah. how are they? You know, there's something. <laughs> um, girl, you know, so, you know, I play college ball and I coach, you know, college, you know, guys way back in the day. I've done some summer camps with girls and boys, you know, everything from like, you know, second grade to eighth grade, high school is the whole nine. But, man, girls are challenging because they are very smart um, and very literal, right? Um, <laughs> and then they're mean. They're super mean to each other. I didn't know that in fifth grade they started to kind of click up already, you know, and kind of start picking on each other. It's weird. Um, but they're great. Overall, they're pretty great, man. They, 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 they make me a lot more patient. Dude, picking on each other is a real thing in, in high school and middle school I, I, and fifth and sixth grade. When I, uh, when I switched schools from fifth to sixth grade, all of a sudden I was getting bullied all the time. Mm -hmm. and. And we don't even know what bullying is sometimes. So I feel like you as that coach recognizing it is probably something you're doing on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's fun, man. It, you know, I, I, as you know, I like to stay busy. I like to keep my, keep my um, wheels turning. So it's, it's been fun so far. How'd you pick uh, fifth grade girls basketball? So a buddy of mine who I played college ball with, he, um, he's like the assistant athletic director or, you know, he's in charge of their athletic program. So um, he just knew I wanted to get back into coaching and asked me if I wanted to help out. Um, I gave him my availability, and it just so happened to land with when, you know, it's going to be fifth grade girls. So that's what's up. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I found that uh, giving back is ultimately what fulfills me more than anything like throw real estate and money and business out the door. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I do is, I do uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Love it. And, dude, when we get to go to, like, uh, you know, we get to go to some basketball games or just go out to eat, like, it's a very life-changing experience, more so for me, I think, than him, which is counterintuitive. I mean, I'm sure it's awesome for him, too, but, you know, the littlest things for some people that we take for granted are what make me so grateful for what I already have. Yeah. I love that. Um, I'm right there with you, man. I think I, I used to try to make sure I volunteer once a month and now it's just like, I just go all the, all the time, you know? So um, everything from tutoring in Chicago, which uh, a good friend of mine, Michelle Turtelot, she's an attorney here in Chicago. She um, showed me this organization three years ago. Um, it's, it's actually a really awesome program. You literally sign up, they pair you with a kid. You can do, you know, you can do fifth grade, you could do seventh graders. It doesn't matter, but you know, they pair you with the kid. I've had my kid now for about two years. Um, he's awesome. They give you a lesson plan. So you don't have to, you know, walk in and like create a lesson plan or even have any teaching experience, but you know, you show up and, uh, you can do virtual or you can do in person. So, um, that's been really great too. Yeah. One of my co-workers did some tutoring at Gigi's Playhouse mm. uh, and I think they're I think on autistic or on the spectrum and mm -hmm. it's almost one of our, it's one of our requirements I think we do eight hour eight hours a quarter which isn't a ton but most people to be honest don't do any <laughs> <laughs> oh exactly you know what and and <sighs> and that's the prerogative like I obviously you're not like we're not trying to make people feel guilty about not you know volunteering or doing whatever um people people help in their own ways all the time right and like you know I, and what i found too is like you know a lot of times like we don't even know who's doing what right like social media is um social media is a highlight reel you know people like post wins like you don't see a ton of people posting their l's so you know take it with a grain of salt yeah that's the truth that's the truth about social media that's the truth about Christmas and presents and media and money and it's uh, not as authentic and genuine as it should be because yep. people relate more when we're being 
honest, transparent, vulnerable, yep. showing our losses more than our wins. And because people can relate to that, shoot, I have more losses every day than I do wins as a fact. But as long as I keep going towards the direction I'm going, I know I'm never failing. 100%. 100%. Love it. But, dude, anyways, real estate-wise, I don't really know – how you got into real estate. I know that previously, like you said, you were hooping, played basketball. What was your story after getting out of school and your transition into real estate? Yeah, so um, I started working for um, Nike for uh, a little bit. Um, loved it, you know, I'm an athlete at heart. And so, you know, that was kind of like my start in kind of like the, the sales marketing world. And then um, I got recruited to work for a company called James Hardy Building Products, which, you know, Hardy Board. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and so I was there for four or five years and I did everything from, you know, literally knock doors and what we called battleground neighborhoods. Um, you know, getting the door slammed in my face, basically getting the opportunity to do a quick pitch to a homeowner. Um, and then while I was at James Hardy, this realtor, who you might know, Eli Masood, he runs a team at Compass. Um, he's awesome. He was doing real estate part time and was like, hey, man, like, you know, I I'm, I'm making some good extra money, but I'm also getting swamped. You should get your license. Um, I, I kind of need some help. And so for me, I was like, you know, this is my first like real job out of college. And I was making maybe like 35 grand a year. And I was like, you know what? I'm good. I've made it. I don't, I don't need any extra money, you know, cause I'm, I'm from East St. Louis. And I mean, like, you know, like that's a lot of money though, you know, especially back then. So fast forward, um, Eli kind of Wolf of Wall Street at me and started showing me commission checks. And I was like, Holy <laughs> shit, this guy's actually making some real money. So, um, like he made what I made in a year in like a few months. Right. So long story short, ended up getting my license. This was 2015 and uh, I've been in real estate ever since. No way. Yeah. I, Oh, I wanted to mention too. So you and I, we didn't know each other almost a year and a half ago. And how we met was super straightforward and simple. Something I'm always trying to do and embrace, even in my own uncomfortableness of networking mm -hmm. and going and saying hello to people that I haven't met before, yep. which is always something I struggle with. How how did kind of like your networking story get you into the position? Like you were chair of YPN for mm -hmm. everyone who doesn't know that's young professionals network of car. Like how, what, what leads up to that? Cause I feel like that's a, you know, super high respected position in one of the biggest cities in the country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so kind of just, I, I think I'm always curious and I'm always like looking to, get to the next level it's like my gift and curse you know and so um i was looking just for like the next thing like you know looking for the next person to meet to learn something from and um you know just saw the ypn thing on car a breakfast and i went to my first breakfast was uh you know grace Coggy. she's with compass um she's awesome she was actually the ypn chair at the time and so uh the breakfast was i forget the topic but it was an awesome breakfast and i was like fuck like this is pretty awesome like this whole yeah you know, room of 200 realtors are like, you know, kind of chasing the same thing in terms of, you know, like looking for their tribe, looking for like the next person to meet, to learn something from. Uh, and it was just very welcoming. So um, this was maybe four years ago when I went to my first breakfast and then I just kind of plugged in ever since. And, um, you know, like I always say, like, you know, the more you show up, the more opportunities you get. So um, I kept showing up, I kept meeting new people and I kept getting doors opened up for me. And that kind of led me into, being on the YPN board, and then from there being YPN chair a few a few years after. Were you on any other uh, boards before you were on the YPN board? Nope, nope. YPN was my first board. Dude, that's what's up. Yeah. I just got on the professional development and property management board. Love it, love it. Um, is Chris Peza still um, the head of the property management board? Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's awesome. He literally... He, he knows every li literal, literal thing in that world about property management. He's awesome. Yeah, he's super sharp. I know he's at uh, Apartment Source. Yep. And I know they're a good young property management crew that are crushing it out there in the property management game, something I want nothing to do with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you, brother. So um, when I was working with Eli, um, 
he had some investors that were awesome investors and they started acquiring properties. And so um, I helped start their like kind of property management wing of their investment portfolio. Mm -hmm. And um, holy shit, man, it's, it's, it's one of the like darkest, most negative industries that I've ever like been a part of. You know, no one calls and says, hey, Devon, you're doing such a great job. I want to pay rent early. It was always like, hey, man, I'm locked out. Hey, man, I can't pay rent. Hey, man, I, hey, man, this, you know. And so it's a very dark industry. And so I, I always tip my cap to, you know, those who do property management. Dude, that's, that's an amazingly true way of describing it. And I've never heard someone say that before. And I've never even, like, registered that in my brain of, like, how dark and not crippling, but just like negative, mm -hmm. you know, like that is, I can't think of like any positives that really come out of property management besides, you know, maintenance issues, rent issues, you know, everything. No. Yeah. Like you said, no one ever calls you and like, my heat is a perfect temperature. Like, <laughs> I th thank you guys so much for giving the boiler a tune up and, mm -hmm. you know, redoing these windows and all of that. And so, yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, I learned it the hard way. We closed on a 19 unit building in Cicero. And, you know, here I am, of course, the guy who wants to do everything, uh, which is going to be the opposite of what I'm doing in 2023. I'm going to be saying no a lot more. And, and I'm going to be saying, yeah, no a lot more because my theme is uh, no is a choice, yes is a question. And so... I bought that building in Cicero and I thought I was going to be able to manage it myself. And it ended up that, dude, there were so many freaking tickets that I feel like I'm talking to myself now. <laughs> I am talking to myself, but Devon's going to come back or I'm going to invite him back actually. But yeah, I ended up getting this property on my own and thought I'd be able to uh, manage it. And dude, the tickets just never stopped coming. And <laughs> dude, I worked in prop tech in property management and it was just like unreal how many kept coming. And it wasn't even a bad building. It was just also previously poorly managed. Mm -hmm. And like the one thing I didn't realize that makes a lot of sense looking back is once you transition property management companies, a lot of times, once you had a poor property management company previously and you switch to the new one, that's when a lot of the new tickets start coming because they're like, hey, all these issues that this last property management company didn't fix, we want you to fix it. And yeah. it's just like, boom, 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 boom. And you're trying to do the right thing. And dude, you're just inundated by, you know, the, the, negativity and 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 yeah i mean and and we we did the right thing we ended up handing it off to one of my friends crushing it now yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah i was like this was the best decision i ever made in my life uh handing it off because i was just like i am not a property manager i'm a general contractor tried and true i'll take those problems on all day but yep. not those little ticky tack ones that are just relentlessly killing your positivity all day long 100 percent. it's it's like I, I'm, I'm a, I'm so optimistic about every. I'm, I'm a blindly optimistic person, like literally, and it takes a lot to get my mood down. But like, good lord, it was, it was tough. But you know, you live and you learn. I learned a lot, dude. So I wanted to touch on this for sure because it's the, it's the main reason I want to talk to you. You're on a billboard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like one, like. How did you decide to pull the trigger? How did you pick the location? How much did it cost? How like how how much has it influenced like what's going on in your life? Like give me the like full down low on like from start to finish when you guys started talking about it, when you pulled the trigger and like what was the key you, you know decision that made you do it? For sure. So let me start by saying, you know, I, I think billboards are very or at least the one that we have at least it's a very vain thing to do, right? It's very like, look at me. And that's mm -hmm. contrary to popular belief, like <clears throat> I'm not a look at me person. Like I like, you know, having conversations with a million people, but you know, even like, being chair for YPN and like hosting breakfasts and being up there talking to 200 people and you know, like that's, 
Like, it doesn't come natural to me. I, I can do it because, you know, I'm a beast and I can do it. But, like, that's, like, not my thing, you know. Um, so with the billboard, it wasn't, like, an easy, like, oh, let's just do this billboard so we can have everybody look at us and take pictures and all this sort of stuff. So um, yeah. Jordan, my business partner, who you know, obviously, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we went back and forth on it. Um, but how it kind of came to fruition was, you know, we were – in the process of potentially leaving our old brokerage compass, uh, which we love, shout out compass, you know, love and miss you all. Mm -hmm. um, but so, you know, as we're kind of ramping up conversations with Dreamtown, um, it was kind of part of the package when we made the move. So, um, you know, I can't say, you know, in an honest breath that if we were just still at compass, we would have said, Hey, let's do a billboard, you know, because they are expensive and they are tough to track the R uh, return on investment you know, mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, like, is this worth it? Is it not? You know, and so uh, we ended up pulling the trigger on it more so just to, you know, make a splash in terms of, you know, switching brokerages. Um, so ask me again, I think in, you know, maybe about four more weeks, you know, on the, you know, traffic and traction and kind of, you know, some of the, the things that have come, kind of came up from it. How long, how long will it be up for in total? Like two months or three months? Two. Two months? Yep. Sweet. Yeah, yeah, I saw you, both of you guys. I took a picture of it, and I was thinking you guys were both looking extremely dapper. So I only pray that uh, you get a ton of business from it because I think it's a, a pretty cool thing to be up in front of everyone. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. And, you know, we, we actually ended up getting, like, a list of, you know, maybe, like, 50 locations in terms of different billboard locations across the city. So we landed on that one just because, you know, it's right on the blue line stop, and there's a ton of just foot traffic and car traffic. So... Um, that was kind of the the thought process behind picking that location. Yeah, that's right by my house. I'm at uh, Armitage and Western and the billboards at California and Fullerton. In Milwaukee? Right? Yeah, in Milwaukee. Yep. So, yeah, the prime location. So about the switch to Dreamtown. Yeah. That's probably a big deal for you. Yeah, you know, so it's actually, um, it's where I started my real estate career. So I started there, you know, six years ago. Um seven years ago. Um, and it was super tough leaving Compass, you know, um, I was for sure, you know, like drinking the Compass Kool-Aid and, you know, mm. um, Compass didn't do anything wrong. Like, you know, we, we, Jordan and I like just made the decision based on what's best for our business, not because Compass was coming up short in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, it was a tough decision because we, you know, I was at Compass for five years. And so, you know, like those relationships are like, I kind of grew up at Compass in terms of, you know, like YPN and all sorts of stuff. And then, you know, I was uh, on the team that was starting a Compass specific YPN. Um, and so it's pretty difficult to leave those relationships, but ultimately, you know, you got to separate the business from the personal, um, and, and keep it moving because, you know, for Jordan and I, like we think, and, and we know that we can go to any brokerage, you know, in the country and be successful because, you know, at the end of the day, as great as Compass was or is, and as great as Dreamtown is, um, we're the brand, Jordan and I, you know, and now Julian and Melanie, you know, um, our clients come to us for us. You know, they, half of them don't even know we change brokerages, right? Um, they want, you know, my expertise and Jordan's expertise on, yeah. you know, investment properties and, and you know, is it, is it now a good time to buy all that good stuff? And so um, we ultimately made the decision and uh, so far so good. What do you tell people right now? Is it a good time to buy? You know, I think it just depends on the person. Um, Generally speak, if I, I don't like ans answering general questions, but generally speaking, I say yes. Um, and I would tell them that, you know, it's a good time to buy right now because there's no one else really buying. You know? <laughs> yes. Um, you know, like, so here's what we know. We know rates are going to come down next year. Like people are, are praying for crashes and they've been saying it for years and months or whatever but you know people smarter than me you know are saying otherwise and so i trust data right and so we know rates are going to come down next year you know whether it's mid summer or late uh fall or whatever but i can guarantee you the spring market will be on and popping i can guarantee you it's going to be a lit early spring market what happens after that i don't know but i can tell you right now the second there's not a lot of people looking and so that gives the leverage to the buyer um, properties are, you know, kind of sitting on the market now, you know, 60 plus days, like again, advantage buyer. So, you know, versus in the springtime, there's going to be more buyers out in the market, multiple offer situations. You're going to be paying closer to list, if not list, if not over list versus right now, you know, you got an opportunity to go get a good deal. Yeah. 
I 100% agree. That's the old Warren Buffett quote, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's less, less offers right now. There's less, um, just like you said, people in the market and you can get a better price. So what I'm recommending to most of my clients is, you know, buy a point or two down over the next year or two, which is common. And, you know, you'll be able to refinance and then boom, dude, it, your payment's going to be, you're going to be such a better position because you got a better price and now you can refinance a year or two later and you're, you're in prime position. Uh, what did it say? Marry the house, date the rate? Or yep. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. You know, and, you know, I, I say it as much as I can, whether it's, you know, on Instagram, in person or LinkedIn or wherever, like. I literally, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart and soul, I don't give a fuck if you buy a property. I really, really don't. But when you're ready, I'm more than capable, eight years of experience, to help you buy it. But, like, I don't sell houses. I'm not in the business of convincing people to buy a home. Like, I'm never going to sell you the home. At least that's my mentality. You know, like, like sales to me isn't about selling. It's about helping, you know. So when you're ready, I'll help you you know, buy a home, but you got to make the decision and then I'll help you. I'm not going to convince you to buy this condo or investment property or, or single family home. I'm just not. Damn. I love that. I'm not going to sell you a house. I'm going to help you make your own purchase. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's what you're doing ultimately as a real estate broker. You're essentially advising your client on something that you're an expert in. 100%. You're not, yeah, I feel like so many, especially now, I feel like you see a lot more of the disingenuous realtors who maybe are feeling that, you know, tightness of the market mm -hmm. and, and pushing people to do something that they're not necessarily comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I think the more important part is like you said, it's like educate them why it is a good decision now. Mm -hmm. It may not be for everyone, right? but for the people who can understand that you're going to get a better price, interest rates are going to go down, you're going to be able to refinance, it's a no-brainer to me. I'm yep. buying all the time the right deal at the right price. <laughs> even even from the standpoint, oh, I was trying to say hello to someone, um, messed it up, but you know, do you know Kelly Parker? She runs a team um, mm. at Compass, Chicago Home Collective. No, I don't know Kelly. But She's should... awesome, dude. She's literally just a breath of fresh air always. Um, we talked about this was when, you know, things were a lot more hectic, you know, multiple offer situations, you know, rates were low. And so everyone was buying money was cheap, all that good stuff. It was it was uncomfortable for 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 me to push buyers in the sense of like, hey, this property just came on the market. We have to go see it today or tomorrow. Um, by the way, it's probably already going to have five offers on it. Um, all five of the offers are going to be over list price, um, probably by, you know, 10, 15, 30,000. Oh, by the way, the CMA says the property is actually worth this. So if you buy it, you're going to be overpaying by this much when it doesn't appraise out, you're also going to need to bring this much cash to closing. Like, so like that was a, I'm not that person. Like that was uncomfortable for me to say all that to a buyer because like at my soul, I want you to take your time. I want you to feel nice about you. I want you to feel good about your decision. I want you to be excited about your decision. I don't want you to be like super stressed out to where it's like not even a, a fun um, or at least a, a clean, smooth transaction, right? So I like where we are now in the market. Do you have a lot of clients who are doing any renovations right now or is it typically turnkey, ready to move in type of stuff? So over the past few years, it was all mostly, I would say, 80, 90 percent turnkey, you know, unless there were some investors who were, you know, buying some, you know, value add type properties. But for the most part, it's been people that were buying, you know, moving ready or super close to it as possible. So what's uh, what's your game plan for 2023? You had any specific targets, goals that you and Jordan are after? My game plan for 2023 is to fucking dominate. <laughs> like literally dominate um we in our team meetings like i start by saying fuck the outside noise right like you know everybody's saying the market's gonna be less transactions next year and you know it's gonna be a down market or prepare to you know do less deals and it's like cool fine like we don't care we literally don't care like we can control we can control 
um, and interest rates isn't something we can control. So we don't even think about it outside of being able to educate our buyers on like, you know, generally what the rates are. Um, you know, so we're looking to dominate. Um, a big part of our business business is going to be doing more things with, um, you know, our past clients, you know, businesses and their jobs, you mm -hmm. know, like lunch and learns and things like that. We had a really, really good one uh, about two weeks ago. And so uh, we're going to do more of those. Um, but more, more than anything, honestly, um, we, we had everybody just do an audit of their past business, right? And like just segment where their business came from. So for me, a lot of my business came from, you know, my, you know, alumni, you know, people that I went to school with, play basketball with in one way, shape or form. And so it's just for us, we're not going to reinvent the wheel. We're just going to do more of what works, period. Yeah. Cut out the outside noise. Yep. Love it. Love it. Great book. No fucks given. Just do you. <laughs> yep. Yep. 100%. You know, and this is easier said than done, but like, you know, everybody's got an opinion. Everybody. You know, if you do the right thing, someone's got an opinion. If you do the wrong thing, someone's got an opinion. So like, like it's easier said than done, but like, just do you. Just go. If you, if you want to go date 20 women, go date 20 women. If you want to go date 20 guys, go date 20 guys. If you want to freaking move to Alaska, move to Alaska. Like, no matter what you do, like, someone's going to have an opinion on you. So just, just do it, you know? And like, literally, don't worry about what anybody else is thinking. Easier said than done, but do it. Yeah, I'm of the opinion. And I've kind of come to this revelation more in like the last call, like two years is in, in my frame of thought perspective, there is no gray. There is black and there is white. Mm -hmm. And most of the time there's a right and there's a wrong. And we just have this little voice in our head that says, don't do it. You can't do it. What are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Even though we know that there's always the right decision and mm -hmm. too often we're not willing to push through our discomfort and face our fears. Uh -huh. I know for me, every time I've done that, I've gotten to the other side and I'm like, damn it, why didn't I do this sooner? You yeah. know, it's just, it's so difficult to build that standard in your life to be someone who embraces discomfort and leans into your fears every time. You got any specific advice on how you're leaning into your fears in 2023 besides just fucking dominating? Um, that's a great question. Let me think about it for a second. Um, I think, I think something that I like to take comfort in is like, you know, I, I have good conversations with, you know, people who make a lot of money, who mm -hmm. are awesome, who give great advice. I have people who, you know, make good money or like, you know, no money who are awesome and give great advice. And so I think that, you know, like, I just, I just know that everyone's working on something, like yeah. regardless of what they portray on social media. Like everyone's working on something. Like, um, name any like you know wealthy person, they're working on something, right? Whether it's business wise, personal, whatever it is, like they're working on something. And so, like you know, I think that for me, I, I know that I'm always just a work in progress. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And like, there's always just room to get better at everything. Yeah, I think we always, I know for me, it's like, I, I used to, I got into a much better habit of just, like you said, focusing on me. But in the past, it's like, we always think someone's thinking something about us. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it's like, dude, they're not thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking you're thinking something about them. Yeah. And, and it's just so often that we get into our heads in this battle back and forth and back and forth. So I just try to cut out the noise. Uh, one of the things I've leaned into more than anything, Devon, is being super, super decisive. Mm. When I go to the restaurant, I want to pick what, I, what I'm ordering in 30 seconds or less. Mm. Because I believe how I do anything is how I do everything. Mm. I build these habits of being decisive. I know I'm making a decision. If I make the decision that isn't the most beneficial, I know I'm going to learn from it and be a better person because I you know, reflected on that uh, issue I had. And then jumped into my next thing immediately. I love that, man. I love that. I mean, there's a quote that I, you know, love saying that I have it wrote down somewhere, but it's, you know, make the decision and, you know, all the answers you need will start to appear. All the resources and tools and people you need will start to appear, you know, so make the decision and like trust in yourself that, you know, you're going to figure it out. Um, you know, and so like, that's again, like part of like my gift and curse. It's just, 
you know, a lot I of think times it's just your curse or just your <laughs> gift, dude. It's yeah. not a curse at all. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 you're right. I agree with that. Sometimes it gets me into trouble, which is okay because I know that I'm capable of getting myself out of it. Um, yeah. And I, I, I mean, I mean, good trouble, by the way. You know, but it's it's. I don't really dwell on any decision. Like I'm like, oh, okay, well, like let's that's that sounds like a good idea. Let's see it through and figure it out. You know, um, which I think that it is there's a lot to be learned from that. Yeah, I mean, it's in the past. Decision made. There's nothing you can do. You can't yep. change. It. Like, yep. Yeah, that's the struggle. Is like, you know, in my past life, it was like I was either living in the past or living in the future. I was worried about my last decision and then worried about my next one, opposed to just living right here in this lane yeah. right now, thinking about how I'm visualizing my future, how I'm going to dominate in 2023, just like you. And like you said, we live in an attraction based universe. We mm -hmm. send out positive vibes. We get positive vibes back. What happens when we're worried about money? We have tons of money problems. It just happened to me. I was, a, I had an issue with my credit score. All of a sudden I got another bill from my, Loan company, got another bill for my car. I was like, what the fuck? All of a sudden, it's just like, God, I had to reset. And all of a sudden, it just changes. It's just yeah. like, the second I get back on track, that's one of my favorite quotes is, uh, the highest achievers get back on track the fastest. So I'm just mm -hmm. always trying to get back on track as fast as I can. I love that, man. I think you're doing a great job. Well, dude, uh, super awesome talking with you. And anything I can do, to continue to add value. I want to do some more lunch and learns. I want to talk about some construction with you and do some deals. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure you dominate in 2023. I appreciate that. Likewise, man, obviously you, you know, my number, you got, you got the bad phone. So anything I can do to help you in terms of anything, you know, um, whether it's with YPN, whether it's, uh, I'm also on the RPAC committee this year and I'm also on the sustainability group year too so um so lots to focus on plenty of work to do and so um anything i can do to help you um just let me know all right brother look forward to crossing paths in 2023 all right brother talk to you soon man appreciate it all right later dude yep see you